What is up, bros? We're Josh here, and today's video is all about the Tier 6 German battleship, the Prince Idol Frederick, and if it's worth it or not. Now, this is obviously time-sensitive, this little part right here. You can still get the Prince Idol Frederick for free, the Prince Idol Frederick event. This will be done relatively soon, and once you finish all of these grinds, you will actually get the ship for free. Now, since this video will obviously be around much longer than this event is, let's just look at the ship itself. If somebody were to purchase it in the premium store, that's the idea. We'll kind of look at this, but... Limited time only, you can get the Prince Idol Frederick for free, um, depending on when you see this actual video. So first we'll look at the stats, we'll kind of break down what's changed over time, and then check out some gameplay as well, showing where this thing kind of excels. But overall, this ship has really kind of fallen. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. This is one of the most this is one of the ships I was most excited for over time. Um, as you saw through all of my past preview videos, this is actual review of it. Um, it has been a ship that has really kind of just been nerfed into the ground. It was one of the most anticipated ships for me uh, coming to the game, and then they basically neutered it to what its current state is over time, changing stuff on this. So what the Prince Idol Frederick used to be was this pretty damn good, I would call almost like a light battle cruiser, kind of like the Sharn Horse play at Tier 6 with extremely high AA, nor torpedoes, but uh, it was that type of play style, fast firing fun, and it had a super high AA. But over time, what Wargaming had did was nerf it kind of to the ground, change its turret rotation, change its main batteries, and what we have right now is a ship with a middle of the ground 52,300 health pool. That's pretty standard, that's really not that bad. Uh, you have ships like the Normandy and the Dunkirk, which are, um, Dunkirk is a bit higher, but Normandy, th there's plenty of ships that have lower health pools, so the health pool is kind of fine, but you are that German battleship that tends to be relatively squishy, and as you check the armor layout right here, you can see that you'll be taking lots of pen damage, but really not too many citadels because it's just a German battleship. One of the main ships we'll compare it to, obviously, is the Bayern, the Tech Tree uh, German battleship, which obviously is much more armored and a bit more of a better, uh, I would kind of call it a better brawler, just a better overall battleship. But the Prince Otto Frederick is decent on the health pool. Armor, decent, as I said, as we just showed it right there. But the main battery is where this thing really gets me. And this is a perfect example of what on paper does not actually show in the game. Reload of 28 seconds. It's actually one of the faster reloads at this tier. Um, but don't let that fool you. Maximum dispersion of 241 meters. Checking out the Baron. Um, at a almost identical range of 17.7, 30 seconds at 240. So the guns are very similar just off of those statistics, but if we check out the millimeter of the shell, 350. So one of the smallest calibers of this uh, tier, and if you look at the Baron, the Baron rocks a 380 millimeter. So the Baron is going to be better against basically uh, I, basically everything. It's eight shells going out on the Baron of bigger caliber. You're better against battleships, a tad slower, but the Prince Idol Frederick has 350s, eight of them going out every 28 seconds. What you will see in this ship is that it's actually quite weak against battleships. Still very good against cruisers. Uh, 350 millimeters tier six is a great tier for battleships versus cruisers they tend to be awfully fragile and again still with destroyers you're going to have some pretty decent uh pretty decent success there with secondaries this is where the ship has basically rose up with the fall of everything else and what i'm talking about is the main is this ship used to be really kind of focused on the main guns and the aa uh back in the day with the, one of the first iterations of this ship the aa levels and the dps of the aa were almost atlanta level imagine a tier 6 sharn horse with an atlanta level aa on top it was completely broken overpowered now i was thinking that they would change the aa over time and make it a bit more balanced and just kind of have this fun tier 6 or tier 6 battleship um be in this tier but tone down the AA. it was a tad too much well they didn't really change anything ever on the aa what they did was nerf everything else around to make it so you couldn't spec fully into the AA and take the full benefits. Um, as we all know, Tier 6 is a great tier for multiple uh, uh, multiple CV games. Obviously, this is before the 8.0 rework. Um, so going into the future, we're not sure how many CVs we'll see. Probably still a decent amount. And going with the AA on that. Um, maneuverability of this ship. Still fantastic. One of the fastest uh, battleships at this tier. 29.4 uh, 29 knots. 800 meter turning radius and then the rudder shift time of 11 seconds. Detectability, 12.6. When you compare that to the Baron, 
uh, this is a Baron without concealment too. So um, it would be even much lower than that. So the dispersion is kind of middle of the ground, checking out the Arizona with a concealment 12.0. So you're just a tad higher than that. Now going over with this ship, what we have done, actually let's go to modules really fast. Uh, modules with the ship, what I did in the past was we went with the AA mod. So with that kind of changed, uh, that the guns have been kind of neutered and everything else has changed. I've had to change from AA mod two to I went with full blown secondary mods, and, and that's kind of the reason. Um, aiming system mod one is fantastic if you want to get those guns a bit more accurate. But the strength of this ship is not about its guns; it's kind of the package it brings to brawling. Um, which is also something good and bad, and we'll show within the game. Um, so I went with secondary module, uh, buffing out those secondaries to a staggering. Now, this is with the flag and AFT. Check out the captain really fast. Uh, preventive maintenance, adrenaline rush, BFT, AFT, concealment. And then we went with high basic survivability and high alert as well. So we're really going um, with a survivability build. One thing you could easily do with this, and one thing I have done with several other captains and tried it out and, had, and have enjoyed, is switching out high alert for expert marksmanship. I would recommend doing that. This is just the captain I threw on for the video. Um, but almost the same build, but picking a high alert instead, or picking expert marksmanship instead of high alert. The turrets are a tad slow. Um, but what this has done is turned in from a quote unquote kind of a longer range ship. It seems kind of weird because in the past it was fa relatively fast firing and pretty dang accurate. But what you have is these massive secondaries. So 7.6 kilometers, it's tied with the Baron for the longest range. That's with AFT, the module, and with the extra flag. Um, and let's dive into the actual gameplay. We'll talk a bit more about the ship and kind of where it lies with a very competitive tier six tier. I mean, just checking out, we have x monsters like the fuso um the arizona the war spite this is a very competitive tier for a ship that in my opinion overall is really not that good so here we are in game with the prince auto frederick and this was actually one of the rank sprint games we played with the ship it, and rank sprint is a kind of a good arena to really show off where this thing can actually be strong but this is a game that's going to show both the strengths and weaknesses of this ship so let's just go over the strengths of the ship well let's go over the weaknesses first you have a very small caliber on a battleship that has trouble especially in a tier that tends to get up tiered a decent amount not all the time but a decent amount so it's a weird mix of HE and AP on this boat. Still a battleship though, so AP is going to be your primary ammo. HE though is a decent and semi-reliable friend when it comes to this. Especially when you get a battleship that's not giving you any angle, which you'll see a little bit more. Even something uh, relatively unarmored like the Dunkirk that we're going against this game. You'll see me having trouble pen a Dunkirk in a battleship. Uh, another weakness of the ship. Uh... It just is in a tier that has a lot of battleships and a lot of really, really good ones. So not only is there a terribly high entry level for being what I would consider a good or and or worth it battleship at this tier, tier six is maybe one of the most competitive, if not the most competitive, um, with having just tried and true kings of these battleships. Strengths of the ship, though, uh, you have good secondaries. You have good maneuverability. And you have, you know, you have some armor that can kind of semi be trolly. But the thing about that, though, is when I look at this game, um, I tend, in a game full of RNG, I want something that's as consistent as possible. And that is not what this ship is. This ship really excels in a small, uh, a small type of scenarios. And that is, this ship is an actual brawler. That's where this is going to excel. And getting within that 7.6 kilometer range, again, that range is with the flag. So if you don't have the flag, it's 7.2. But getting within that secondary range and then doing your damage, not only with your guns, because inaccurate guns tend to be relatively accurate the more the closer you get. So uh, you can actually put in some damage. Now, this ship is still a battleship, so you'll see me, and as you can see, you'll see some salvos that are decent, but again, this is a ship that I would not consider in that I would not consider cons uh, consider consistent. There we go. I'll say that ten times fast. This is something that uh, is going to just get outshined by something that shoots more shells. Fuso, Arizona, New Mexico, um, or just shoot shells that tend to do more damage and care less about armor. This is where something like the Bayern would even be considered a better ship than this, because the Bayern does have bigger shells, can overpen more armor, and really do a lot of damage. However, this still is a battleship, so it can pen Citadel targets. 
but I would not be too reliant on that going forward because there are going to be hit and misses on this. Uh, again, broadside cruisers are going to show you that you're going to be able to pen them with uh, any other cruisers. Even if I was in a graph spay, I would have done too decent damage with that. So where this thing will shine is you'll see it, especially later in the game, is getting close to targets. Uh, downside is those scenarios don't really happen. This game for a long time, and as you saw right there, two full pens for no damage. This game for a long time was quite popular with the secondary builds. You're seeing other ships um that have kind of been i would call them power crept over a while and that's the just the german battleships in general these full-blown you would even see full secondary yamatos uh that would just bully its way in and kind of tank the damage and really shine there and that's kind of just been taken away with other ships that are consistent at range and that's what you really really want especially in a tier um that you need every big hit to count how many situations are you going to be getting where you can actually kind of brawl? This is one of the biggest downsides of another ship that's in this game, the Roma. The Roma is a ship that um, tends to do extremely well with its heavily armored, but its guns are pretty inconsistent, and I would even label them bad at long range. Um, it, it, it excels when it can get close, but getting into a situation where you can actually get close enough to the ships is not always available and really puts you into a dangerous top a dangerous situation just like some ships have what would be a lot of people would consider having a uh, a yolo torp kind of like the turpits right there's not really a better playmaker in my opinion in sub six kilometers than let's say a turpits good secondaries good torpedoes it's definitely a playmaker but this doesn't even have torpedoes again full uh four full pens twelve thousand damage on a broadside dunkirk that's awesome but again that ship is broadside and could have gotten citadels could have gotten bigger with the bigger hit with a bigger shell type most likely and again um as things get farther and farther away you really do feel the inaccuracy of this ship and really wish that you would have one more shells or two have your shells do more damage um, here you're going to see us try to push in and get a bit more of a broadside and get a bit more action going. Um, but shooting at a broadside target, even at 13 kilometers, if I was in the New Mexico or the War Spite, would I have done more damage there? I don't know, because it's it's tough to put it in the same situation. Um, but really, it, getting yourself into the spot where this thing shines just seems a tad far-fetched for it to happen in every game. And to really have it in a lot of situations, you'll it's almost kind of like throwing your ship away. Secondary ships, I think, had a time where they were extremely good, but really, I think that time is long past, and it's all about ships that are a bit better at range, a bit more accurate. Um, although, if you are somebody who really, really likes getting in close, I could see you enjoying this ship, but I could see you just having better overall games if you're in the Bayern meaning that the Baron is just going to have bigger cell, bigger shells. It's consistent at uh, situations that aren't purely brawling. And, you know, just even hitting one or two shells for 4,500. 4, I played the Baron, and I was absolutely obliterating other battleships. And it's never a good thing to really kind of get bullied by a Dunkirk when you're in this battleship. Obviously, I'm focusing on these guys. I want to get these as many broadsides as possible. Obviously, shooting at a broadside battleship is fantastic, and it will potentially do more and more damage, but I just won't have the time. The Dunkirk's extremely fast, and we're just somehow getting overpens. Now, the trajectory is pretty quick on this ship. Um, it's, it's a bit faster than the Baron, so getting used to the shells isn't really that bad, but here, if, if this... If this Dunkirk stays at range, I don't really have uh, a, a, a way to really kill him. It, I'm going to only shine if I can get kind of close. Again, it's still a battleship, so broadside salvos are still going to hurt ships, but um, you could have definitely hurt them more with a smaller shell. That means your citadel damage will be less, um, but you do have a tad higher of a reload at 28 seconds, which is one of the faster ones at this tier. But it does not feel good as a battleship to get bullied by a Dunkirk. Um, trust me, if I was in a war spite, we would have kind of laughed off the energy or the, uh, this, uh, try by them and just pushed them away and punched them right in the nose. But just knowing that I have a smaller gun to work with, um, that, uh, opportunity really isn't even ever there. Um, one thing we'll do though is we were kind of playing this, uh, as we were with the Baron, we played on this flanking battleship, which ended up working a lot. Now this uh, this Dunker kind of threw a giant wrench in our system. 
but it does show kind of what you'll see long range with the ship and you may say okay you have 72,000 damage, you have three citadels, why are you whining about the guns? Now this is obviously a, a, a case of this doesn't happen every game. Now this is obviously a good game that we had and this is something that you know I'll tend to use uh, a good example of what you can do with ships. But there was a while there where I was struggling when I first got the ship to ever break 100,000 damage. And it's when you realize that you kind of need to spec this thing in a specific way for it to really excel on a consistent basis. And what I mean by that is once you figure out how to, uh, what the strengths of this ship are now, which are not what it used to be in the past, it's something you can really kind of work with and look for opportunities there. But what it does excel in is something you really have to look for. And uh, I was kind of wanting the Fusa to roll back. I didn't need him out here with me. Um, but uh, it, I will want something like this, and that's one thing that I'm going to compare it to the Baron, is that I want it to be a, um, I want it to be just more consistent, and that it's not. So if I were to take this, I don't think the Prince Idol Frederick is even in the top half of Tier 6 battleships, and I think it's in potentially the bottom three um, with other ships like the Dunkirk, which I'm getting bullied in this game, and maybe something even like the, you know, something that's relatively inconsistent now trigger warning i may be making fun of the mutsu soon but i would probably put the mutsu at one of the bottom three battleships um and even something even like the normandy i know i even like the normandy because it's fast but overall it gets picked on because it's lightly armored and um it, it kind of just doesn't do a really good job tanking so for me when i'm looking at a battleship for how many better choices there are there's in my opinion there's even a better choice in the tech tree if you want a battleship that will brawl then that is the bairn i would put this overall at the bottom of tier six battleships yes it is different but um i would put it at at number two of just german battleships at this tier at a ship that you can technically get for free which is the baron um, i think the baron will do better at long range i played an entire season of rank sprint with the baron and kind of fell back in love with it the shells hit much harder and even if you get close you have that high aa and you have those good secondaries and you can just really kind of excel when it comes to the ship now we're finally in the secondary range so this is something i want to kind of show you guys and you'll see what this ship can actually do this is where the ship will shine now we had a decent game at range and uh, a decent game at range so far but this is where you're going to start seeing those secondaries pop off in the strength of the ship this is why i also recommend that bft and the aft for the extra range bft for the reload on both the secondaries and that so if you can find situations like this this is where that will shine but also again this is where the baron could have done just as good a job and didn't cost you any money obviously if you got this ship for free i think it's a fantastic ship that's free um but overall i think it's uh going forward if it will cost you money i think this is a pretty easy pass if you are looking for a tier six or a just a german um trainer as a battleship trainer Scharnhorst is the way to go it's it's like this ship but a better version and you have torps to make that actual play so if you're looking for a german battleship trainer my opinion is to always go for the Sharn Horse. It's fantastic. So one of the, I think one of the best ships to pick up as a premium ship. It's so much fun. And there we go. Still broadside. But we want to get those secondaries running. And we want to get this win. So that's what we're going to be doing. Pushing forward. And I'm deciding to whether wait for that uh, that banner to go through. But I'm going to give it up to the Shinoname. I'm going to get on this cap, hopefully. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm trying to tell the, the Shinoname to get the Baron. And I was waiting to see if the T61 was rolling around, which he is and uh yeah he asked me if i want smoke but um i want to get these secondaries in so this is again where it's going it's going to really shine um but if you can't get those in this ship just ends up being a very inconsistent mediocre ship it's just like when you have a ship that's extremely high with aa and uh you you want you know there's no cvs there right so you have a um, a situation where you're specced out for something, but it never really happens. So with a ship like this, you're specced out for brawling and getting in close and going against other ships and doing a little bit of damage towards uh, towards battleships, but decent against cruisers. If that can happen, it's going to do fine. If it doesn't happen and you end up getting bottom tiered and you can't really brawl because there's no real reason to, and they have a ship that's going to pick on you, then you are kind of SOL with what you can honestly do. So when you have that, you want a ship that's just more consistent. 
We need a ship that's more consistent, even at this tier. Again, it would be the Baron, the War Spite, the Fuso. Um, half, half of the Tech Tree Tier 6 ships. And again, I don't want this to be a roast because it does have some upsides. Um, getting in close and, and, and farming lower tiers, the Tier 6 maps, uh, do have some good uh, funnels to get closer into the fight. So that is definitely um, a bit more fun. And the situations, I think, will happen more often. Let's say if this was kind of a uh, Tier 8 ship or something like that. So the, op the, uh, the opportunities do arise a bit more. But again... Um, in a game of RNG, I want consistency, and this ship just isn't that for me. But if you like secondaries that go pew pew and um, like to get in close and maybe like to do that, and you, and you maybe want to pick up another tier 6 battleship, sure. Um, in my opinion, I would honestly save my money. Maybe get the Sharn Horse if you don't have it, and really just kind of use the Sharn Horse instead of this. If tier 6 is your thing and you really love tier 6 play, War Spy, Arizona. Um, insert a, 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 almost every other tier 6 when it comes with maybe besides the Dunkirk and the Mutsu um, as just better pickups for straight up tier 6 play um, what it does bring to the table is lots of secondaries and there's a nice little example of what the guns can do 5 kilometers, not even close just splashing the, the, the destroyer around uh, but for me is this ship worth it? it's worth it if you can get it for free in the event <laughs> so if you can get it for free it's a fantastic price. If you have to pay any money for it, I just don't see the value there. It doesn't bring something that's stronger than a tech tree ship, and it really doesn't, I don't know, it, does, it doesn't seem unique enough to warrant paying for it. Um, in my opinion, one of, the, one of the bottom tier 6 battleships in this game. But overall, a pretty decent game. Rank Sprint was a lot of fun, so we got to kind of see a good mix of long-range attacks as well as brawling. Again, the strength of this ship is getting close, getting in, and really pumping out damage, but the problem is finding those situations to see this ship really excel. So overall, the ship, I would say, is very mediocre um, with uh, little sparks of brilliance, and um, if you are looking to pick up a tier 6 premium, I would go elsewhere. I would really check out elsewhere. And if you really want to tier uh, a, a German battleship trainer, you have better ships like the Scharnhorst and the Tirpitz to pick up. But anyways, guys, a nice little game in rank sprint. Two kills, 124,000 damage. Top of the team. Look at that. That was actually a lot of fun to play. We were doing kind of a rank sprint gauntlet. We were playing all the premium ships. Um, so that was pretty cool. So uh, the Prince Otto Frederick carrying the team. Look at us go. And uh, a good little split of that. Again, it's still a battleship, so you can sit at all those cruisers as we did. But you do see the weakness against those battleships. I mean, even at 19,000, 24,000, those were multiple salvos taking a while to kind of just barely chunk them down. But you see a nice little spread of just when you really got those secondaries in there. Um, a nice little split up from the damage. But anyways, guys, here's my review of the Prince Idol Frederick. It's a great price if you can get it for free, but I don't think it's worth the money. Um, I would look elsewhere. Lots of other better options that are even more fun to play. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.